So when we look at the periodic table, we see that there is the S block and the L for those electrons filling in the S block would be a zero. We see the P block and the L for those ele elements, those electrons filling in there would be a one. We see the D block where the L would be two and we see the F block where the L would be three. And this is as far as we go for ground states as atoms, ground state atoms, which is always going to be the lowest energy. And so this is even an idea for how we can fill in some diagrams for this kind of stuff, which we'll get to in class. And so looking at the periodic table, if you picked any particular atom, you would be able to tell or you should be able to tell where those particular electrons were. Now, based off of the allowed values, when n equals 1, the only allowed value for L is n minus 1, which is 0. So there is only a 1s orbital. When we look at the periodic table, we see hydrogen, we see hydrogen, and we see helium, and that is all we see in that first period, and that is all that we see filling electrons in for the first shell. For n equals 2, our allowed values of L are 0 and 1, which corresponds to n minus 1. So we can have 2s and we can have 2p. The 2s we see over here, the 2p we see over here. This would be called the subshell, subshell. Okay. When L is zero for hydrogen, the M sub L is only allowed to be zero. So there's only one single 1s orbital, one orbital. When L is zero here for a 2s, there is still only one orbital. So every s orbital only has one orbital. And what I really should say here is every S subshell only has one orbital. But when you look at L equals one, M sub L is allowed to be everything from negative L up to positive L as long as it's an integer. So we can go from negative one to zero to positive one, which gives us three orbitals in the 2p. Is it going to matter if L is 1 if we're in the third shell or the fourth shell? No, we're still going to be looking at a p subshell, which means we're still going to be looking at three orbitals, no matter which shell that is. So the 3p will have three orbitals. The 4p will have three orbitals. If we go ahead and go up to n equals, one, n equals 3, now L can be 0, 1, or 2. And so we have the 3s with one orbital. We have the 3p with three orbitals, as we said. And when L is 2, m sub L can be negative 2, negative 1, 0, positive 1, or positive 2, which gives us five orbitals. one, two, three, four, five, in the 3D. Each orbital can hold two electrons. And when we look at the periodic table, we see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten atoms across or elements across. The other thing to notice is that you don't see these 10 appear until we're actually in the fourth period. That's going to come up in class. Okay. Finally, n equals four. You should go ahead and attempt on your own. 
and we will check over n equals four in class. I would like to know what are the allowed values for L. I would like to know what are the allowed values for M sub L for each value of L. Okay. And we'll come back and we'll check over those in class and we'll talk about a little bit more about the energies of these levels and specifically how those energies vary a little bit and start to overlap and how we actually have to fill these in so that the electrons, remember if I, the electron have a choice, I will always go to the lowest energy or orbital available. And we'll talk about that in class and we'll talk about the energies of these, okay?